children today let us study the story the blue bead by nora bird well what is interesting about this story is the fact that its setting is india though also partly it is suffolk s u f f o l k that is a county in england although many students find the story a bit difficult because of its length let me tell you children that on the contrary this is a fascinating story about a little lovable girl the author knows and describes the kind of life that is there in the forest and is presented a vivid description of the same so that is really the beauty of this story moreover one little hint i would like to give you all over here is that this is a story of an indian author There are two more stories of Indian authors in your textbook. One is A Horse and Two Goats as you know by R K Narayan and the other is A Face in the Dark by Justin Bond. So all these three are important as far as your boards are concerned and you can expect any one out of these. So without further ado let's begin with the story The Blue Bead. I suggest that before we begin You should have your textbook and your pen and notebook with you. So let's start right away. The Blue Bead by Nora Burke. Let us first try to know the author. Nora Burke was a well-known English novelist. She was a non-fiction writer. By non-fiction we mean the real stories based on facts. Her father was a forest officer in India. He was posted in the jungles at the foothills of the Himalayas. Nora's early childhood was spent traveling through these forests mostly on elephant back. The Indian jungle and her interaction with wild animals inspired her autobiographical travel book The current story is taken from one such book that is The Jungle Picture published in 1953. Nora's life in the forest made her formal education difficult. But it is interesting to know that she learned to write by the age of 8 and from that tender age she had begun writing stories. Now before we go ahead let's peep into some of the technicalities in this story As far as the style is concerned the writer has made use of long sentences to describe the situation and character The sentences are involved complex and cumbersome Some of them are not easily intelligible One has to read some of the sentences twice to comprehend the full meaning but then that's a tool used to grab attention the author has used the interesting technique of foreshadowing foreshadowing is used to provide information about one subject that will play a role in the later part of the story for example over here the story begins with the crocodile but the crocodile doesn't come into picture again until the main event that is the attack this develops a sort of a suspense in the story the third point is that the author has created word pictures okay this is the pictorial quality the quality of creating pictures requires artistic skill which literally brings the characters live in front of you Fourthly the setting the setting as you know is in a third world country where the author has emphasized poverty We are now going to study the first two pages line wise as they deal with the description of the crocodile which is an important question that can be asked in your exam and you are expected to quote some of the words or phrases used as they are so let's begin 
the blue bee. From deep water came the crocodile. Now children, the point to be noted over here is that the author takes her time to describe the surrounding where the story takes place, starting from the crocodile and river. This description builds an anticipation in the reader's mind about what's going to happen next. This is how even this foreshadowing technique is used. So from the deep water came the crocodile. Now, see how Nora Burks creates a sense of tension within this first sentence. Okay, from deep water came the crocodile. The brilliant description of the crocodile instantly grabs your attention. And now, see the syntax, see the syntax in the opening line. From deep water came the crocodile. There is reversing of the traditional subject verb object structure. Can you see that the structure of the sentence is reversed where you find this word crocodile the last, okay? And because of this, what happens is, within this sentence structure, there is a delayed entry of the subject of that is the crocodile. This intrigues, this intrigues the readers and this creates a sense of mystery while introducing the crocodile to the reader in such a manner, okay? Let's go ahead. Out of black water, curved with whirlpools, and into the frill of gold shallows by the stepping stone. The author is definitely fond of details and visual imagery. Powerful visual imagery is used where the surrounding, that is the black water, and it is covered with whirlpool. What is a whirlpool? Uh, when you throw a stone uh, in water, you see those ripples which are formed, that is the whirlpool, and into the frill, that is the edge of the golden shallow. So what happens is, this crocodile came from deep water, okay, and the water was completely black, and it was covered with whirlpools, and it went where? Into the frill of gold shallows. Now, shallow is the area where the water is a little bit shallow. Okay? There is no much depth. And the frill of shallows, that is the edge of the shallows, it went into the frill of the gold shallows by the stepping stone. That is the small stones which are uh, in the riverbed. So, those are the stepping stones. See the description. He was twice the length of a tall man. A tall man we can see about a six uh, feet and twice the length means the crocodile was round about 12 feet tall. And inside him among the stones which he had swallowed to aid digestion rolled a silver bracelet. I feel there is a bit of humor in this because it's written that to aid digestion, the crocodile has eaten stones, okay, to aid digestion. And along with that, there was a silver bracelet. Timber was being floated down this great Indian river from forests further up. And there were sleepers lying stuck around the stones until someone came to dislodge them and send them on their way or until floods lifted them and jostled them along. Now children, this is a very common, uh, you know, fact uh, or the process of transporting logs in India. You know that these are transported downstream through the current of water. So similar thing is there, the timber was being floated down this great Indian river, maybe the Ganges because the um, setting is the foothills of Himalayas. So, from the forest further up and there were sleepers. So, this is a new word, first new word for today that is sleepers. Sleepers means any heavy piece of wood. Where were they? They were lying stuck around the stones until someone came to dislodge, to remove them, to move them and send them on their way or until floods lifted them and jostled. What is a jostle? 
to jostle is to push roughly and to make way okay that is jostling them along the crocodile had no need to hide himself he came to rest in the glassy shallows among rocks and balanced there on tiptoe on the ripple sand with only his raised eyes out of the water and raised nostrils breathing the clean sunny air see carefully look at this sentence and uh, the timber and all the description is given how it was floated downstream and now it is said that the crocodile had no need to hide himself being so ferocious and such a strong creature it never needed to hide himself and where did it come to rest in the glassy shallow among the logs and balance there on tiptoe you know what is uh, tiptoe that is slightly elevated so human quality is given to the crocodile over here on the rippled ripple means was covered with small waves on the ripple sand with only his raised eyes out of water and raised nostrils breathing the clean sunny air around him broad sparkling water traveled between cliffs and grass and forested hills see how the surroundings are intricately described over here a jungle track came out of shrub sorry scrub each side and down to the sun whitened stepping stones on which a little fly catcher was flirting and trilling along so what's a fly catcher it's a small bird that catches flying insects okay that's a fly catcher which that gives its name to it okay a small bird that catches flying insects see the intricate description over here along which a little fly catcher was flirting flying quickly and trilling to trill is to spin along the mugger crocodile now see this uh, hindi word use mugger uh, that is from the hindi word that is mugger much mugger crocodile blackish brown above and yellowy white under lay motionless able to wait forever till food came now uh, the crocodiles have got a tendency to camouflage themselves and because of that this color blackish brown so what was the color of the crocodile blackish brown from above and yellowy white underneath and it lay motionless able to wait forever till food came now the next uh, new words i hope you have understood the new words sleepers and what is to jostle and what is to trill and now come these adjectives there are four adjectives four to five adjectives which are used in a sequence over here let's read this this antediluvian saurian this prehistoric juggernaut ferocious and formidable a vast force in the water propelled by unimaginable and irresistible power of the huge tail lay lapped by ripples a throb in his throat can you uh, do you see these long sentences which are used so you need to be extra attentive and so this uh, device of long sentences is used so this a uh, crocodile is called as a antediluvian saurian antediluvian is nothing but old fashioned saurian is a reptile or a lizard like creature this antediluvian saurian this prehistoric juggernaut prehistoric as you know ancient juggernaut something large and powerful and cannot be stopped something that cannot be stopped very ferocious and formidable formidable that is strong okay ferocious and formidable a vast force in the water propelled or pushed by unimaginable and irresistible power of the huge tail lay lapped lay covered by ripples a throb in his throat what is a throb in the throat of someone that is a, a beat in the throat his mouth running almost the whole length of his head was closed and fixed in that evil bony smile have you seen a crocodile smiling any time just imagine how a crocodile would look smiling as you know that its mouth is covering its entire head and where the yellow underside came up to it it was tinged with green so this is all uh, uh, you know a 
something that is used for the camouflaging of the crocodile children that covers your first page of the story that is page number 93 page 94 it starts with a long sentence and there are certain new words in this sentence let's start reading from the day perhaps a hundred years ago when the sun had hatched him in a sand bank a sand bank is nothing but a raised area of sand he had broken his shell and got his head out and looked around ready to snap at anything before he was even fully hatched children here you come across the aggressive streak of the crocodile even before it is fully hatched it is ready to snap at okay it is ready to be aggressive then from that day when he had at once made for the water ready to fend for himself so that's the first new word on this page ready to fend to fend is to take care of oneself immediately he had lived by his brainless craft see see this uh, phrase brainless craft brainless because it is guided by its instinct okay brainless craft and ferocity this word we have come across uh, on the first page that is he was ferocious and formidable ferocity that is extremely violent energy escaping the birds of prey and the great carnivorous fishes that eat baby crocodiles we know that there are some bigger fishes which even eat the baby crocodiles he had prospered catching all the food he needed and storing it till putrid till decayed till rotten in the holes in the bank see now the favorable situation for the survival of the crocodile tepid water to live in lukewarm water to live in and plenty of rotted food grew him to this great length about 12 feet okay so the first paragraph on page number 94 tells you about how aggressive the crocodile was okay and how it worked with its brainless craft okay its instinct and how ferocious it was and what food did it eat now we go to the second para now nothing could pierce the inch thick armored hide hide that is the skin not even rifle bullets which would bounce off so you can imagine how thick that skin of the crocodile was only the eyes and the soft underarms offered a place so you know the vulnerable areas the soft areas these were the eyes and the soft underarms he lived well in the river sunning himself sometimes with other crocodiles now here you come across the other entities which are also surviving along with this crocodile muggers as well as the long snouted fish eating gharial gharial again a hindi word so you know that the crocodiles with a big snout okay these were also there on warm rocks and sandbanks where the sun dried the clay on them quite white and where they could flop off into the water in a moment if alarm flopping okay to drop into a liquid that particular splashing sound that is called as the flopping sound so you can see here the visual imagery as well as the auditory imagery used and the um, author is trying to uh, give a very you know intricate description of even the small things the big crocodile fed mostly on fish now please mark this paragraph it is very important for a question that is what did the crocodile feed on okay just underline all those keywords the big big crocodile fed mostly on fish but also on deer and monkeys that came to drink perhaps a duck or two so there are four things fish deer monkeys and duck but sometimes here at the ford at the ford is the shallow part you know that may be crossed by walking across it but sometimes here at the ford he fed on pie dog pie dog is a slang word used for ownerless you know half wild alsatian dog so these are called as the pie dog so this crocodile would even feed on a pie dog full of parasites or even a skeleton cow okay and sometimes he went down to the burning ghats and found the half burned bodies of indians cast into the stream 
as you know that in the ganges these last rites of people are carried out so all these things he used to feed on okay you have to remember all these keywords in this paragraph and mark it as important beside him in the show as he lay waiting glimmered a blue gem now here for the first time the introduction of the title the blue bead takes place okay he starts with the author sorry she starts with the foreshadowing the description of the crocodile and this description is very important okay and now we come across this word the blue gem or the blue bead now how was it it was not a gem though it was glass sand worn glass that had been rolling about in the river for a long time by chance it was perforated or pierced right through the neck of a bottle perhaps a blue bead so that was what was called as the blue bead page 95 throws light on the protagonist of the play the protagonist of the story that is sibia In the shrill noisy village above the ford out of a mud house the same color as the ground came a little girl a thin traveling child dressed in an earth colored rag she had torn the rag in two to make a skirt and a sari now there are uh, different phrases on this page which tells you more about sibia so if a question is asked in your exam about the character sketch of sibia there are certain phrases which go into that uh, you can see on your screen that the point of the thin starveling child a starveling child is a child who is marked by poverty so uh, the first point is that she was a starveling child and she even wore a rag she had no proper clothes but it was a rag which was uh, cut into two parts to make a skirt and a sari for herself uh the next paragraph is very important because it tells you about the food that sibia uh used to eat sibia was eating the last meal last of her meal that was the only meal left uh, with her for the day and what was it it was chapati wrapped round a smear of green chili and rancid butter so just a chapati that too it was wrapped with a a uh, smear of just green chili and rancid that is having some sort of an unpleasant smell uh, rancid butter and she divided this also to make it seem more and bit it showing straight white teeth now this uh, sort of an action of sibia where she divides the chapati into uh, smaller pieces maybe uh, this uh, depicts that she is playing some sort of mind games with her own self uh in order to you know make herself feel good that as if that she is having a uh, uh, ample amount of uh, chapati to eat or another thing is uh, it depicts her innocence and it depicts the just child like action of dividing the chapati into small pieces with her ebony hair and great eyes and her skin of oiled brown cream she was a happy immature child woman about 12 years old so we have to underline her age that is she was 12 years old and that also goes uh, in the important points uh, about her character and she had ebony hair ebony that is jet black or dark black hair and great eyes and uh, also she is called as an immature child woman the reason why she might be called as an immature child woman uh must be because of the dress that she was wearing that is a skirt and a uh, sari and also she was barefoot and of course because of that she was often goosey cold having goosebumps on a winter morning and born to toil we know that she was uh, uh, really working hard she was born to toil even born to toil points will go in her character sketch now the next paragraph uh, tells us Uh, about uh, what uh, Sibia wished to buy. In all her life, she had never owned anything but a rag. She had never owned even one anna, not a pais, not a pay or a paisa, even to buy, say, a handful of blown glass beads from that stall in the bazaar. 
where there were piled like stars or one of the thin glass bangles that a man kept on a stick and would and you would choose which color you have you would have so she was just interested in those bangles she was tempted to buy those but she could not afford anything just but a rag she did not have money at all to buy those bangles now she knew what finery was expensive clothes and jewels is called as finery though she had been with her parents and brothers all through the jungle to the little town at the railhead where there was this bazaar so now the description of the uh, bazaar it followers uh, the author has um, really created a fine word picture of the bazaar first the location of the bazaar it was exactly located at the railhead that is a point where the traffic originates and or terminates okay so that's the railhead and she had walked through all the mining people milling people and the dogs and monkeys full of fleas the idling gossiping bargaining humanity spitting beetle juice heard the bell of a sacred bull clunking as he lumped along through the dust and hubbub so even a bull has been described in detail over here a sacred bull which was clunking uh, you know that dull uh, hollow sound of the bell as he lumped to lump is to move noisily and clumsily okay along through the dust and the hubbub hubbub is a noise and the confusion of this market place she had paused amazed before the sweet meat stall this is important because a uh, question might be asked that what did she look at when she passed before the sweet meat stall the question so there here is the answer uh, to gaze at the brilliant a uh, honey confections a buzz with dust and fleas so what is a sweet meat first of all it is a sweet and an attractive food okay and uh, she used to gaze at the brilliant honey confections the honey sweets and a buzz and it was fully buzzing with dust and flies but see her condition she couldn't even afford that she couldn't afford anything but a uh, just a earth colored rag they smelled wonderful Uh, above the smells of brains and humanity and cheap cigarettes this shows her discerning no she could smell all these sorts of things at home she sometimes tasted wild honey or crunched the syrup out of a stalk of sugarcane so these were the things which were available in the forest but these sweets were green and magenta very attractive colors these sweets had that is the green and magenta that is purple red color so all these things uh, were attracting sibia a lot page 96 gives us an idea of the expanse of the market then there was the clock stall stacked with great rolls of new cotton cloth stamped at the edge with the maker's sign of a tiger's head and smelling so wonderful of its dressing straight front the mills that sibia could have stood by it all day so uh, you can see the expanse of market how much it is there are there's a new cloth uh, you know the rolls of the cloth which are seen and uh, another thing which can be seen with this description of the market is uh, sibia's longing for the things at the market fair okay but there were other wonders to see satin sewn with real silver thread tin trays from birmingham uk and a sari which had got chips of looking glass embroidered into the border she joined the crowd round the kashmiri travelling merchant on his way to the bangalore he was showing dawn colored silks that poured like cream simile used over here and he had got a little locked chest with turquoises you know that it's a greenish blue semi precious stone an opals which is a multicolored semi precious stone best of all a box which when you press it a bell tinkled and a yellow woolen chicken jumped out so all these uh, you know uh, in addition to uh, addition to show the expanse of the market and what all things were available in the market over there shows the temptations for that little uh, sibia Uh, which she could not afford to buy at all the ash she did not own anything other than just an earth colored rag 
there was no end to the wonders of the world that is the world which was not in sibia's reach isn't it what was her world her world was eating a chapati smeared with chili and rancid butter and wearing a rag torn into two pieces uh, making a skirt and a sari for her own self that was her world and this uh, different world of the market had so many attractions for this little child now let's see uh, what tasks had sibia been doing during her childhood but sibia in all her life from birth to death was marked for work we had seen before okay in the description that uh, she uh, was uh, just um, you know made for the toil okay she was uh, she was used to toil all the day she was marked for the work but sibia in all her life from birth to death was marked for work since she could toddle toddle that unsteady walk of a child she had husk corn gathered sticks and put dung to dry and cooked and weeded and carried and fetched water and cut grass for fodder this is important because it shows the different jobs that she did see the variety of jobs that she did since she could toddle she had husk the corn to remove the outer cover is the you know the husking of the corn and she would have gathered sticks and put them to dry and cooked and weeded and carried and fetch water and basically cut grass for fodder so so many things this uh, little child used to do now what was she doing over there what was her routine she was going with her mother and some other women now to get paper grass this paper grass is a special grass which is used for making paper and this paper grass she used to get from the cliffs above the river when you had enough of it you could take it down by bullock cart to the rail head and sell it to the agent who would arrange for its dispatch to the paper mills the women offered to often toiled all day at this work and the agent sat on the silk cushion smoking a hookah here children this paragraph is important because it shows the disparity of labor you can see between the men and the women the women and even the little girls of sibia's age they were involved in you know the very um, you know hard work of bringing paper grass from the cliffs and then again taking it down to the bullock cart and then uh, getting it to the agent but the agent he was sitting on the silk cushions and just smoking a hookah the disparity of the labor then such thoughts did not trouble sibia however she skipped along with a sickle and home made hay fork uh, please underline the word hay fork since this hay fork is later used in the story as an important weapon okay then uh, you could skip on the way out but not on the way back when you ached with tiredness and there was a great load to carry so this was the routine of the little girl sibia some of the women were wearing necklaces made out of lal lal beeges the shiny scarlet seeds black one end that grew everywhere in the jungle now they show some activity of these women to make some necklaces out of the shiny scarlet seeds okay from the forest and they were black at one end it was best to have new necklaces each year instead of last year's faded ones and sibia was making one too so it was their activity every year they used to make new necklaces for their own selves and sibia was interested in one too now the next lines are important as if they are connected with the protagonist okay how nice it was going to be, to be to hear that rattling swish round her neck as she crouched along with lots of necklaces so when she would wear those necklaces there would be a rattling swish new words rattling swish that is the light sweeping sound round her neck as she crouched along with a lot of necklaces this word crouched f r o u s h e d is not there in any dictionary it's a misprint over here it should be crushed f r u s h e d okay not crouch crushed means to rush violently and she as she crushed along with lots of necklaces so there would be a light sweeping sound okay and she would she would imagine that and she was longing for one such necklaces but 
Each seed, hard as stone, had to be drilled with a red hot needle, and the family needle was snapped or broken. So she must wait till they could buy another. So see the poverty. She did not even have the money to buy uh, one, you know, small needle for her own self. Oh, for the strings and strings of glass. And beads, anklets, earrings, nose rings, bangles, all the gorgeous, dazzle, bright jewelry of the bazaar, all her little golden body decorator. So this is her imagination. She wanted, she longed for all these things. Okay. So like uh, this, her body is said to be the little golden body. Okay, golden body. We had um, uh, seen in the previous part that this girl was. Beautiful. She was a happy child woman, and again the reference to the golden body, beautiful body. Okay, and all her imagination. She wanted uh, very desperately that necklace made up of the scarlet seeds, but she did not have the needle. She did not have the money to purchase the needle for it. And now the rest of the page uh, tells you something about the life of the Gujar community. Okay, let's see. Chattering as they went, the women followed. the dusty track towards the river on their way they passed a gujar encampment of grass huts where these nomadic graziers would live for a time until their animals had perhaps finished all the easy grazing within reach okay so there was an encampment of these nomadic graziers okay this nomadic tribe encampment is a settlement uh along which uh, which is there along with the cattle like sheep goat cow buffalo so all the it is called as an encampment and these were said to be nomadic people they used to travel from one place to another and they had so many animals and uh, no doubt these animals were a source of their livelihood let's see how they earned their livelihood until their animals had perhaps finished all the easy grazing within reach or they were not able to sell enough of their white butter and white milk in the district okay so these uh, this was a source of income for them sell, selling the white butter and the milk okay in the district or there was no one to buy the young male buffaloes for tiger bait for the trap for the tiger so one more way of earning the livelihood through animals that they would sell those buffaloes their buffaloes for the tiger bait one more reason why they would leave this encampment was or perhaps a cattle killing tiger was making a nuisance of himself then they would move on so they were the nomadic tribes okay and they used to earn their livelihood with the help of animals let's see sibia glanced at the gujar woman as she went past so again int intricate description of the dress of the gujar woman they wore trousers tight and wrinkled at the ankles the gujar women wear the trousers tight and wrinkled at the ankles and in their ears large silver rings made up of melted rupees so very special sort of earrings made up of rupees which were melted and one of them was clinking a stick against the big brass gura gura is a big pot okay made up of uh, brass in which they fetched water from the river for the camp to see which ones were empty so they were just clinking a stick against to check whether the pots or the guras were empty or not the men and the boys were out of the camp just now with the herd or gone to the bazaar to sell the produce so that was one more one of their activities the men and the boys were out to sell their produce a question might be asked over here where had the guja men and the boys gone so you should see all the things in detail okay be very careful and read everything very carefully but one of the or two buffaloes were standing about now the description of the buffaloes that is the creatures of great wet noses and moving jaws and gaunt black bones what is gaunt that is plain and unpleasant black bones so even the buffaloes are described over here then the gujars were junglies a uh, important paragraph why were they called as junglies because as sibia too born and bred in the forest they were junglies because they were born in the forest and even they grew up and they were bred in the forest itself for countless centuries their forebears or their ancestors had lived like this getting their living from animals so basically uh, these uh, uh, people earned their livelihood from the animals from grass and trees and they scraped their food together and stored their substance in large herds and silver jewelry so basically they uh, uh they uh, just um, 
had a lot of animals to earn their livelihood uh, maybe they were practicing a little bit of agriculture or even horticulture or something like that and see the next sentence which is very important they were man in wandering pastoral age they were in search of pastures pastures and they're not the stone age hunters and not yet cultivator so agriculture was not also practiced that much okay so basically they were they were the man in the wandering pastoral age not stone age hunters and not yet cultivators ah now there was the river twinkling between the trees sunlit beyond dark trunks they could hear it rushing along and now they could hear the river children we are going to stop with this presentation at this point because up till here uh, what the author has done is that she has painted the setting very well she we know now about the life in the jungle very well which started with the description of the crocodile that very ferocious formidable creature and the description is very important and after that uh, we saw the description of sibia the protagonist of your story and then the marketplace and then the gujar so with all this painting of the setting now uh, we have the real story and the real action of the story coming where there is uh, some fight in between sibia and the crocodile okay so that we would do in the second part of the presentation